What is happening, everybody? Welcome to episode number 164 of the Games and Grabs podcast. My name is Sully G, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello. Finn, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Very good. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good. Looking forward to Christmas. But most importantly, second week in a row that we've done a podcast. Hey, Second week in a row. We deserve a round of applause for this. We do. Go team. Yeah, go team. Um, um, back back in oof. it. Hopefully we can back in it. Yeah, it that's it. We're, we're, we're back amongst it now. Yeah. Also, look at no technical issues this week. And yeah. it looks and sounds a lot better. I know we're only a minute in, so there's still <laughs> so much time for things to go horribly wrong. But look, so far, so good. Yeah, it's looking good. Looking good, sounding good. There we go. That's what it. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Let's hope you don't jinx it. Well, yeah, I probably have jinxed it now. To be fair, <laughs> are you? Yeah. Um, are you all prepared for Christmas? Uh, I think so. I've got all the presents bought. I think that I need to buy. Okay. I haven't wrapped them up yet because I always keep wrapping up until like last minute because I'm lazy. <laughs> well, I'm the, I'm the same. You know, I um, <laughs> I'm also not very good at it. Oh yeah, I'm upset at it. Yeah can't do it like i wish you could just use tin foil and then like like they should bring out like for idiot people like me and you <laughs> they should bring out like different colored tin foil every year that you can just wrap christmas presents in yeah that'd be a great idea and, and then just like scrunch it up at the back so it stays together and then they can just unravel the tin foil on christmas day perfect yeah that sounds perfect or just it's been a plastic bag but nice thing a plastic bag there you go. Put master. Well, it's just an Asda bag. Exactly. Yeah. Put a bow on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine getting an Asda bag for life, <laughs> like with it's your like, Christmas presents like, in, but it's got a bow on the top. <laughs> That'd be nice. Bag for life is a bit expensive. I was, I was thinking like a regular plastic bag. Oh, you were thinking just one of them like ones that rip if you put your finger anywhere near it. Yeah, we don't want to splash out. We don't spend too much, you know. Yeah, that's fair enough. Actually, I yeah. can appreciate that. <laughs> Times are tough. You don't want to be, yeah. you know. Exactly, forking out for bags for life for Christmas presents. Exactly, <laughs> Let's spend on the budget. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if you want that Christmas present, you, you're gonna have to sacrifice having a good bag and wrapping paper. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, good old Christmas. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm basically ready for Christmas. Every uh, present has arrived that needed to. I've just got to wrap the presents just like you, but. Uh, yeah, no, that's my least favorite thing to do. I'm not excited for it. Yeah, it always takes me like three or four attempts to get it right. Like I'll try and wrap it up, and I, I, I've used to. I've not got enough wrapping paper, or mm. I stick the stylo tape on it wrong. I'm going to stick to get stick to myself. I have to undo it and try it again. Yeah, yeah. I hate when um, I don't know if you do it or not, but I like bite the cello tape off when I've like pulled it off. I use scissors. Well, that, that makes more sense. But like sometimes when I bite it, like you pull it, and then it like folds into itself and sticks to oh, itself. Oh, yeah. Well. Yeah. For fuck's sake. And it, it's, I don't know, just there's got to be something easier. There's got to be an easy, there probably is. There probably is an easier way. But oh. I don't know. Yeah. And you see, see other people do it. You just like, don't, 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 don't tape it, done, sort it. Yeah, it's Katie's like, ridiculous at wrapping presents. It's like she almost knows the exact amount of wrapping paper to use every single time as well. Wow, amazing. Yeah. I, I always have like loads of October into like a big like wrap around itself or not enough. Yeah, yeah. Not again. Yeah. It's better to have too much than not enough because it, it, it's shit if you like see a little bit of the box for your Christmas present. <laughs> yeah. Like it's devastatingly annoying. You know what I mean? Like when you fold it over and there's still like a little gap and you can see like a tiny bit of what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just cover it in like Marco or something. There you go. Just ruin the present. Just color it <laughs> <Yeah>. in. <laughs> Didn't have enough wrapping paper, so I just just colored it in. <laughs> <laughs> At least we only have to do it once a year. Yeah. Well, birthdays as well, I suppose. Well, yeah. Okay. Twice a year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All <laughs> ah, right. So I feel like we're we're on a good run here. Two in a row. Yeah. We've managed to arrange a second podcast at the exact same time as the week previous. We have. Hopefully, hopefully we're we can, here. 
It could be every uh, Tuesday from now on. Definitely, yeah. Should be doable. Oh, I think it's doable. I think it's absolutely doable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go check out Added Time. Brand new yes. weekly podcast from Steve on the topic of the world's favourite sport, football. And yeah, that's yeah, part of the Games and Graps podcast feed, part of Team Games and Graps Studios with Finn and myself. Mm-hmm. And it's good times. Go check it out. It's one of the best football podcasts on the internet. And I'm not saying that because he's our friend. I'm saying that because it's actual facts. Actual facts. 100% true. Proven by science. Yep. By science. Science confirmed it. And they'll yeah. be teaching it in school one day, probably. Yeah, absolutely. If they're not already. Yeah, they, if they're not, they should be. Who you should? Who you see on like, on the wall, like a chart. Here yeah. is some other football podcasts, and all the way up here is Added Time. <laughs> the number one spot. The, uh, forever the number one spot. Yeah. Never to be topped. Anyway, Finn. Hello. What have you been playing this week? Uh, I've been playing um, not a whole lot, actually. I've been playing mostly Rocket League, because I can't stop. It won't let me stop. Okay, it won't let you stop. Okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's far too addictive. Uh, I'm still not good at it. I'm still bad. Uh, mm. Every time I think I'm getting better, I'll go on a massive looting streak. And I'll get frustrated. I'm like, oh, stupid again. I'm not playing this again. Yeah. And the next day, I'm back on it again for the next five hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, I've playing. Uh, I finished a uh, siphon filter on stream, which is a lot of fun. Last wow. Year, it's. I mean, it's a great game. Really good. But it's seriously wonky, right? Like the controls, like now, are wonky. Yeah, yeah. it's left stick to use the camera and move your character. Right stick yeah. does nothing. But it took my one <laughs> out there's a right stick on the controller back in the yeah. PS1 days. Um, but yeah, once you get used to the drankiness, it's it's a lot of fun. It's also very hard the further you get. I did use the rewind big feature on PS5 quite a lot to get to it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it's good that it has that feature though. Yes, thank goodness. Uh, trophies are nice and easy, thankfully. It's a platinum for it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. That's uh, really good, actually. Really good. Uh, Some built two also platinum. I think it's even easier on that one because it's just literally just beat the game and you get all the trophies. Oh right, okay. They should do this for. I know, you know, I know it's not as easy as that. I just just stick them all out there with trophies on. That'd be amazing. Yeah. But you know, I'd love to play the original Metal Gear Solid again. Yeah. Or like give me Tekken 3 with trophies. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love that. Resident Evil 2, classic. Excuse me. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be awesome. We could do this SmackDown 2. We could do this all day. Yeah, we could, yeah. Oh man, Smack. But the best thing you've done there. That'd be awesome. Oh man, that'd be so good. That'd be so cool. See, that's what I would love with the Switch. Like with the uh, Nintendo like with the Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack. Um, like with the Nintendo 64 games. I would love it if they were able to just put the old wrestling games on there. Yeah, that'd be so cool. Oh, I'd be so cool. And Boston rights and stuff like mm. that make it and pretty much impossible these days, but fucking bullshit. Yeah. It depends. Yeah, it sucks. But <sighs> I get it. I get it, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Um Oh also, in. congratulations on the platinum trophy. So let's have a round of applause. Thank you. Oh thank you, yes. <laughs> Also, my I put my uh, the tweet on Twitter saying, "Oh, I got my new platinum trophy." Well, so I'm built up all that. I got like eighty something likes on it. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Like, why, why can't my stream tweets get that many likes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, Meanwhile, I got a platinum trophy, eighty likes. Yeah, all them people who have just been clapping, they've liked that tweet. Yeah, exactly. In fact, uh, Ben Studio the developers uh, replied saying, "Congrats on platinum." I was like, "Oh, thanks. Nice. Ben, make a new one." <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool, actually. Yeah, why not? Just do a remake of the first one. That's the cool thing to do these days, right? Yeah. As long as I can set people on fire with my taser, I'm good. There you go. Taser. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What else? A bit more God of War. It's still. Oh God. my God, <laughs> being with this. I, I can t- as soon as you said. I've been I've been playing some more God of War. Like I could tell instantly that <laughs> what that there was going to be something negative come out of your mouth. It's yeah, I just can't get into it. I don't know why. It's just 
I play it for a little bit. I'm like, uh, I'm kind of bored now. I want to play something else. Hmm. So yeah, I'm going to get to it. It'll just take me a while. I got, I've got more Rocket League to play. Yeah, God of War, Love and Thunder will come out. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, Marvel fans will get it. Um, and you'll still won't have finished Ragnarok. Yeah, I'll get there. Still you may you may get there. I'll make it there. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> well, I think that's pretty much it for gaming this week. Uh, how about yourself? To be honest, I've not had that much chance to sort of sit and play like PS5 or Xbox. I've been playing a lot of Switch this last week or so. Yeah. Um, I picked up the new Mario and Rabbids game. Oh, awesome. Which is things. awesome. Yeah, it's so good. Awesome. And also, it puts Pokemon Scarlet and whatever the other one's called to, to complete shame because of how great it looks. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I don't know how Pokemon always looks so bad. And then again, I guess they rush those games, don't they, Pokemon? Like, you got one year yeah. to make it. Go, yeah. go, go. Like, you, you wipe your ass on as the toilet paper, and then you look at it, and it's Pokemon Scarlet <laughs> and whatever the other one's called. Uh, but then you buy the expensive but- stuff andrex like or whatever and that's the mario and rabbits game worst analogy of all time by the way <laughs> no, comparing makes... games to toilet paper one of which has poo on <laughs> that makes sense to me um, yeah <laughs> no, i really like the first uh rabbits game which you would you i mean you first get it's announced like oh man rabbits Ugh, what's the point of that and it's like yeah. an excellent game Ugh, that's gonna suck but no it's amazing it was so fun yeah and, uh... and they've even changed it up like so you, you could have easily just copy and pasted the first one into a new setting and it'd still be really good but what they, they've changed it up a little bit like the combat is a bit more free-flowing it's still turn-based of course but it is still a bit it's a bit more free-flowing than before that's cool um it's just really good like but also it's just so ridiculous but like, the whole premise of it is ridiculous <laughs> yeah it meant like, well. just i mean to be honest the concept of rabbits is mental anyway and it doesn't make any sense. And I guess it isn't meant to. But then you throw them in the, like, the Mario universe. And then they're just there. <laughs> and it's like, why is there's a rabid Mario, a rabid Peach, and a rabid Luigi? And then, oh, I don't know. It's, it's so difficult to explain. But it's very cool. And this time it's in space. So that rules. Yeah. yeah but rabbits are everywhere back in the day. Starting off like, like a Rayman Wii game. And then it just popped up everywhere. It's like a Rayman Uno deck on the Uno game. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Ubisoft will just put it anywhere. As as, as yeah, as, yeah. I suppose it's not like a rabid Assassin's Creed out yet. It's always coming there. There are people who listen to this podcast who want absolutely no part of that. <laughs> I'd buy it. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be called? Rabbit's Creed? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Rad- yeah. Ezio Rabbit. Yeah, there you go. Just give yeah. that to you like a rabbit hat. There you go. Well, I'll just put the like Assassin's Creed costume on a rabbit. Yeah, even better, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's a new game. Right, somewhere but, right now, a Ubisoft exec is listening to this podcast and being like, what are we doing just sitting around? Scrap that Assassin's Creed game that's supposed to be coming out and <laughs> make one with rabbits. We're going to coin it in here, kids. Put it on everything. Switch, phones, fucking everything. Let's make money. Write it down, write it down. Yeah. That sounds like a Ubisoft thing to do as well. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You can make anything. Yeah. Instead of watch dogs, you can watch rabbits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just all of it. Rabbit just all, you know what? Just scrap every single Ubisoft franchise, but then remake it, but with rabbits. Yeah. That'd be awesome. The rabbit universe. Multiverse, whatever. Yeah. Multiverse of rabbits. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. We, we sorted it. We fixed gaming forever. All in. There you go. Here we go. Ubisoft made all the money for you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. To be fair, like with these Mario and Rabbit games, like the latest one is like such a highly rated game. Like the reviews are insane for it. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. So it's crazy. But yeah, so I've been playing that. Uh, I've been playing Wrestling Empire again. I, I just. <laughs> The uh, it keeps getting updated, like it just does not stop getting updated. Wow, so much stuff has been added. I've got like an entire free roam thing <laughs> where like uh, you can just go 
roam in the streets, go to hospitals, go to hotels, graveyards, and there's just wrestlers walking around and you can just randomly fight. It's so unbelievably ridiculously stupid, but it's still so amazing and I love it. I just can't get enough of it. Yeah, that sounds very fun. But yeah, I've not had a a great deal of chance to play much this week, but I've been playing. I've been pick, when I pick up my Switch, I have a really good time with it. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep doing that. And if I find time, I'm going to. I want to hop on Rocket League with you. So yeah, um, you know, when we finish recording this podcast, I'm going to download Rocket League. What are you playing it on? I'm not Xbox. Are you playing got, on Xbox? Yeah, it's got crossplay. So you can play on literally anything you want. Oh, well, I'll download it on Xbox. That's fine. Cool. Okay. Right. Sounds good. I'll download okay. it on Xbox and then we'll play. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's pretty much all I've been playing. Uh, there's there's games that I want to play. I want to play High on Life. That looks really good. Oh yeah, um, I've got to download it. I really want to play that. Yeah, I've, I, want, I want to crack on with God of War, um, and Need for Speed, and other bits. But it's just you know, it's just finding time. It's a busy time of year. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. And uh, gaming will always be there, so it's all good. Oh yeah, oh, High on Life looks amazing. I, li- I really liked the VR game they made. Um, Trevor Saves the Universe. Played up. Oh really. yeah, yeah. It's so fun. So Did good. you play um, Accounting Plus as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very funny. The, the, uh, yeah, I just like that sense of humor they've got. Yeah, just, me too. Okay. So weird. Accounting Plus is one of the weirdest games I've ever played. So strange. I love it. So strange. Oh, well, actually, one thing I did play before we came uh, on to record is um, so it was on Quest. Uh, it's a Guitar Hero type game called Unplugged VR. Oh, right, okay. So before, uh, so basically, it uses hand tracking to play the guitar, like an air guitar. Yeah, nice. But now they've added so you can use the controllers. And I, I tried that mode before we started recording tonight, and it feels a lot better. Like because oh, yeah. you've got the haptics and stuff like that, and you've got a grip of something instead of a grip of nothing. So it, um, yeah, it's it's a lot better. And they've added twenty five new free songs from independent artists, which is great. And yeah, it's very, very good. They've remapped every single song on the game to work with the controllers as well, which is awesome. So, um, yeah, I, I, I played that. I wanted to wanted to mention it. Nice, be nice to PSVR too. They should do. I mean, that'd be awesome. To be fair, there's no reason why they they wouldn't be able to. Yeah, I imagine we'll see a lot of games like that jump onto uh, PSVR too when it after yeah. comes out, hopefully. I do hope so. I, I do. I do hope that they they port a lot of the games across, because there's some really great games that if they don't port them across, people will be missing out. on. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I'm so looking forward to more VR stuff coming. When's it out? Is it February? Is it or is it? Yeah, I think it's oh. toward the end of February. Yeah, toward the end of Feb. Hmm. Yeah, it'll be awesome. I mean, we talked about it last week, didn't we? I mean, how ridiculously powerful that thing is going to be. Yeah, it's got things like eye tracking on it. Which is crazy to me. I don't even know how that would work, but it's nuts. Honestly, yeah. like, uh, I mean, I'm blown away by the Quest and its technology and the fact that it's wireless and basically just its own standalone console with uh, trophies and achievements and stuff. And mental, it's crazy. Just like full 360 rotation and yeah, you can you can like pass through as well. So like with the guitar game, if you want to just see your living room, you could, but the game is still there it's nuts it's the the technology is only going to get better as well like over time yeah insane cannot wait it's a lot of money it's uh it's a ton of money but it'll be worth it i think i think it'd be really i think it'd be worth it big time you pay for what you get at the end of the day exactly yeah more you you know the the better the experience yeah i mean you know look at the xbox series x slash well okay not the s but the x and the ps5 expensive but they're great yeah great system so yeah phenomenal systems but yeah um right so we did our games of the year last week Mm -hmm. and this week what we're going to do is talk about our uh, most anticipated games of 2023 yeah Uh, i managed to pick five out earlier on that i'm really looking forward to uh did you want to do them in like a, a top five order like we did the games of the year yeah okay that makes sense yeah yeah let's do it okay cool so uh you go first i'm just going to bring up the uh the notes app of my phone because that's why i wrote my notes down this week cool um well the first game i've got on here which comes out somewhat recent, fairly recently in uh towards the end of january is uh the dead space remake 
Yeah. Big fan of Dead Space back in the day. Um, Callisto Protocol came out, which is made by the uh, original uh, Dead Space developers. Uh, yeah. Which got some decent reviews, some pretty negative reviews. Um, I'm thinking this I like one, it. Yeah. It looks it's still, it's still something I enjoy. Um, but Dead Space was the original, you know, horror game in this, you know, with that setting. <clears> I'm looking yeah. Playing again, I was a big, big fan of that back in the day. Yeah. Um, it looks really good. It's on my list as well. I'll I'll put it in number five as well. That's fine. Because then we can talk about it. Um, so we ain't got to talk about it twice. Good point. But yeah, I I, I am really looking forward to it. I like Dead Space. Uh, I, in fact, I liked all of them. I like all the Dead Space games. Um, uh, I also like Callisto Protocol. I think you will really like it. Yeah, I'm sure I will. It's only um, I'll, I'll put my wish list waiting for it to go on sale or PS Plus or Game Pass or whatever. Yeah, which I think it will for sure. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of games that I'm waiting for to go on sale. Evil West being one of them. That looks really good, but I'm waiting for it to go on sale. Um, but yeah, uh, Callisto Protocol is great. It's got Josh, I don't know how to pronounce his surname, like Dumal or something like that. Oh, yeah. Um, if you've seen the first Transformers movie, he's the army dude in that. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Also, why the fuck are they making more Transformers movies? <laughs> Who knows? Like, what are you doing? Like the, the first one's really good. The rest are absolutely appalling. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, maybe they've, I don't know, they're hoping to, they've left it long enough, they're hoping to recapture the, the magic of the first one. But uh, Yeah, but Jesus, we'll it was like 2000, and, I don't know, when the first one came out, 2009? Yeah, a long time ago. But if you can't get it right in the 11 years following that, <laughs> then just don't bother anymore. I mean, they, they must make a ton of money at the oh, box yeah. office. They must do. Big time. But that is a classic case of quantity over quality. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Too anyway, much. Callisto Protocol fucking rules. Transformers absolutely sucks. Um, Dead Space looks really, really good. Yeah, so really. And it's a coming gen only game. It's not, they've not like put it on last gen. So, yes, developers, yeah. that's correct. The correct way to do it. Yes, please. Absolutely the correct way to do it. We don't want it any other way. Exactly. Burn all the PS2. Oh, sorry, PS2. Jesus yeah. wept. It's don't burn back. the PS2. That rules. But, <laughs> yeah, imagine that. like uh, <laughs> A Dead Space remake on PS2. <laughs> I'd play it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> cool. um, but yeah, Dead Space looks really, really good. I'm glad it's only current gen only. It means... Uh, you know, we get the the full experience instead of something a little bit watered down because of hardware limitations. Yes, exactly. Cool. Uh, what well, next game we've got on there? It's another horror game. as the Resident Evil Four remake. Another remake. All the remakes. All the remakes. Uh, obviously, the first three Resident Evil games remade are all excellent. Yeah. So no, no, that this one's going to be even better. Yeah, I mean, this is largely. You know, regarded as one of the best games of all time. Yeah. Um, the original's a little dated now. It's probably okay. fair to say, but yeah. um, I'm super excited for this remake because I loved um, the first three. Yeah. Uh, remade three. I mean, t two was really good and was very true to the original. Three was very actiony. I thought it was very sort of uh, linear action game, but I like that. That suits me just fine. But I think this would be awesome. I think it'd be really, really good. Yeah, me too. In VR too. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting. Speaking of VR, um, they've announced the Resident Evil Eight uh, VR update for PS Five is going to be uh, completely free if you're in a game, which is nice. Oh, that's good. That's really yeah. too, that's 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 really good. I mean, that's you know probably not a cheap thing to do yeah exactly it's gonna take a lot of effort but yeah nice one capcom thank you yeah that'll be really really cool uh i've played resident evil 4 the normal one i have resident evil 4 in vr on quest cool and it's awesome and yeah. mental that they were able to do it yeah like in such a, a good way like it's it's not shit at all it's like really really good that's awesome so yeah, yeah, Resident Evil 4, I think that's going to be very, very good. You know what? I actually forgot about it and didn't put it on my list, but I'm excited for that one as well. Nice. That one comes out on March 24th. Oh man, thick and fast next year. 
They are. Uh, next one on my list is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Ah, uh, yes. Cool. The sequel to the last one that I can't <laughs> remember the name of. All in Order? That's exactly it. Yes. Yeah. Ten points to Finn. Woo. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, that looks awesome. I, I loved the first one. It's, a very, it's just a, a great action-adventure game. Uh, the best Star Wars game probably ever made. Because, yeah. although, I mean, to be fair, that's not really that high of an honor because there are so many shit Star Wars games. It's quite a few. I like the ones on PS3. What are they called? Unleashed. Star Wars? No. Oh, the Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed. That's the one. Yeah. There yeah, they're really good. Yeah, they're, they're good. There's some really great set pieces in. I remember the first part of the second one was just absolutely mind blowing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really, really good. They're great games. But like you got other I mean you've got some real shit stuff in there. Star Wars Connect. Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> we don't like the dancing with the uh, Han Solo. I'm Han Solo. I'm Han Solo. No. <laughs> oh, man. What's hilarious is somebody thought that was a good idea. Somebody thought, yeah. you know what's funny? You know that song Solo by Jason Derulo? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well. Was a Star Wars character called Han Solo? Get it? <laughs> yeah, I get it. I'm not sure the Star Wars fans will like it. Oh, they'll dig it. They will. They'll, they'll think it's really cool because Star Wars fans are really cool people who are very up on modern music and interpretive dance. So I'm pretty certain they're going to enjoy the Han Solo remix of Jason Derulo's song. Yeah. Uh -huh. Turns out cool. they were right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good job. God almighty. At least the, the R2-D2 Xbox 360 look cool. Yeah, that's true. That's cool. Yeah. Fucking Star Wars Connect, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's the next one on my, on my list. That's number four. Cool. Awesome. Uh, next one I've got, and I'm, I'm going to imagine it's on your list as well, it's uh, Diablo 4. Oh, yeah. <laughs> looks, it looks so, so good. So good, and yeah, Diablo one, two, and three are all excellent games. Um, I'm hoping this is going to be good. I hope they don't blizzard it, it blizzard it <laughs> yeah, that's fair, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it looks amazing, it looks like more Diablo, mm. and yeah, can't wait more of that, please. Um, that was next on my list as well, uh, and I think it'll be fine. I think they've they've blizzarded it up enough on the Diablo mobile game, which I have played. And it is very good, but I played it with a I played it with the controller. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I think the main complaint with that was just like the insane micro transactions that oh, there. Yeah, it's. Re I think the end game is basically pointless unless you pay for stuff. Yeah, like the the, ba the base game is really good and the gameplay is great. It's very much just a Diablo game, but uh, the end game stuff. Yeah, I, I think they cap any sort of progression. Uh, beyond a certain point unless you pay for stuff which uh fucking sucks yeah to be pants yeah but um i i have high hopes for diablo 4 i think it'll be really good yeah me too loved three. Oh my god dude three so good it's so good it's so fun cool next one on my list is uh the new legend of zelda game tears of the kingdom yeah me 12th probably didn't know that very cool yeah, that's not that far away either, to be fair. I mean, that's the thing with Nintendo. They're like, yeah, we're making this game. Not sure when it's going to come out, to be fair. but um, And then they're like, yeah, New Legend of Zelda is coming in about five months. So uh, enjoy that. And they're like, how are you so like nonchalant about this? Yeah. I remember when they announced Cena Bay Chronicles 3. I was coming out in like, a few months. And then they brought the release date forwards. So even yeah. closer. It's like, since, like, no developers ever bought the release no. date. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so Nintendo. It's ridiculous. Like it's the most. <laughs> it's, it's just nuts. Yeah. The way Nintendo just do things. Yeah, great. I like it that way. Yeah, uh, never changed Nintendo. Yeah, good on Nintendo. But yeah, this looks amazing. It's like more um, like um, the last game. I keep on to say Skyward Sword. I know it's not called Skyward Sword. I keep technically saying it. Skyward Sword <laughs> is the last one that was brought out. It's a good point, yeah. But it was Breath of the Wild, of course. Thank you. Breath of the Wild. <laughs> well, I keep getting those mixed up. 
Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, Skyward Sword technically the last one that came out on Switch, which is actually also really good. Yeah, really good. I enjoy that game a lot. Um, so yeah, more more Zelda equals good. More peace. Yeah, that that was next on my list as well. Yeah. Oh, great. It's very similar list. <laughs> very similar list. Yeah. Yeah. Very very similar. Um, but I am curious as to what you know. Oh, I already know what it is. I was like, oh, I'm going to be curious as to what your number one is if that's uh, <laughs> if that's you number two. It. But yeah, I know what it is. Go on. Final Fantasy 16, of course. What? Yeah, I know. Shocking, I know. That comes out, uh, what was that? June 22nd. And yeah, it, look, it looks incredible, doesn't it? It does look really good, to be fair, yeah. Yeah, the, com- the uh, combat's a lot more action-y than previous games. I seem to well, miss- how do you feel about that as a as a, an RPG guy? I'm good with it. I like I love action games. Um, um, I, I don't know, it's a mixed feeling. It's a bit- I kind of like it either way, to be honest. I like it if they kept it, you know, classic turn-based. But I also like I love action games, so I'm honestly I'm good either way. And there are so many turn-based RPGs coming out now, a lot of them made by Square themselves. So it's like they've got both; they've got the best of both worlds right now. Mm. So I'm happy. They make the story looks amazing, the setting looks amazing, graphically it's incredible. It's current gen only, it's sticking all the boxes. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it look, it does, it looks truly fantastic. It's a PS5 exclusive. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's up anyway now until I think I think it's like six months to a year or something. Yeah, but uh, it looks really good. I think it'll sort of. I mean, it's, it feels like it's been a long time since Final Fantasy fifteen. Yeah, it's a long time ago now. But then they well, do look at seven years. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is mad. I think it was seven remake fairly recently. So that's true. That is very true. What a game that is as well. Holy shit. Yeah, they've said uh, the next one, the next remake, uh, remake part two, uh, rebirth. It's, it's get, I think I said like winter 2023, but I highly doubt it's going to be this year. I'd be so shocked if it comes out in 2023. Yeah, I'm too big. One of games in one year doesn't seem very likely. <laughs> no, it does not. No, yeah. no, it doesn't seem likely at all. Actually, <laughs> it seems the least likely out of anything. I would say. Winter 2025 at the earliest. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, the very earliest. Yeah. You got more chance of Rabbids Creed coming out fall 2023 <laughs> than Final Fantasy Remake, Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's my number one. Cool. Uh, my number one isn't that. Uh, and it's a game. It's, it's, <laughs> you're, yeah, you'd be very surprised. Um, my most anticipated game for 2023 currently is Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now I don't know if you've sort of been keeping like sort of an eye on this or not, or whether you've seen much about it, but really. it just looks so good. And it's one of them games you look at and you think, "Yep, yeah, that's they're probably going to fuck it up somehow." <laughs> yeah. And it's just going to be a simple like cash grab, but it honestly it looks absolutely phenomenal, and uh, I just it looks so open, and the sheer amount of stuff that you can seemingly do within the game seems quite insane. Yeah, uh, but it looks great. I'm not you know the world's biggest Harry Potter fan, like you know I got Kaylee to thank for me even liking Harry Potter anyway. <laughs> but um, this game looks. Oh, honestly, it looks mind blowing. I just can't wait to play it. I mean, that's due in February as well. Wow! So uh, early February too. But it looks, it honestly looks brilliant, and I can't, I can't wait to, I can't wait to get my hands on it and play it. Awesome. Yeah, I've not seen a whole lot about it to be honest. I'm not a Harry Potter guy, um, but yeah, I've heard some good things. So yeah, I'm hoping it turns out good. Yeah, and what what is promising is they're showing a lot of it. They're like, oh, hey, we're doing a gameplay showcase today. Here's what's going to be in the game. And I think I think they have high expectations for it as well. I think they're really sort of proud of what they've done. And yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on it. It looks awesome. Cool. Who's it being made by? Uh, I don't know. It's been published by Warner Brothers. Ah, I'll have a look. WB Games, but I'm not sure who's making it. Let's have a look. I'm curious. Mm-mm. When you say the name, I'll know it, but... Oh, it's Avalon Software, apparently. Yeah, I didn't know it. Didn't know it. 
Never heard of him. I'm so confident. Like, oh yeah, when you say it, I'll know it. Don't know it. Yeah. Uh, what other games have they made? Let's have a look. Oh, they made Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub Zero. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Such a bad game. Like, I can't believe <laughs> the fucking live action cutscenes with Sub Zero and Quan Chi. <laughs> Literally one of the worst games ever made. Yeah. Not a good start. Yeah, they've made um, other classics like Hannah Montana Spotlight World Tour. Good, yep. Uh, <laughs> Toy Story 3. Yeah. Disney okay. Infinity. That's pretty good, I think. Disney Infinity? Yeah, I quite like that. It was good. Yeah. And a lot of like um games based on um uh, French popular Disney. franchises, yeah. Yeah, the cartoons okay. and Disney stuff. Um so yeah, could could give me the way. <laughs> yeah, but I mean what they've shown so far, I mean it definitely looks better than Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub Zero. Yeah, but I hope so, yeah. How weird were their Mortal Kombat spin-off games, by the way, that they, they made? Very strange. Because obviously you've got Mythology, and then I think you've got one with Sonya and Jax. Oh, uh, yeah. And I can't remember what that's called. Special Forces? I'm guessing it's called that. Yeah, that sounds familiar, yeah. That sounds about right. And then the, it's the one called Shaolin Monks as well, with yeah. Kung Lao and Liu Kang. Yeah, and they all they're all not very good. Yeah, like, who's playing these? Yeah, like I like the idea. Back in the day, I like I never actually played it. I thought, oh, a single player Mortal Kombat game, Sub Zero, that sounds awesome. And then years later, I played it and was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the the least awesome, like ever, actually. Yeah. <laughs> God, it's so bad. fucking bad. Yeah, it's a cool idea. I'm like a side scrolling beat 'em up set with like Mortal Kombat characters, but yeah. <laughs> It's so poorly executed. It is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. At least they tried. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, at least they tried. But yeah, Hogwarts Legacy is my most anticipated game of the year. And now it could go either way because they made Mortal Kombat Mythologies Sub Zero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we keep our fingers crossed. We'll keep, yeah. But to be honest, like I said, I mean, because they keep showing a lot of it and, you know, really hyping it up. Uh, I, I'm I have very high hopes for it. Yeah, they put a lot of money into it, so for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's a yeah. lot of money in that franchise. In fairness, so big time. Yeah, big time. Um, is there anything that sort of didn't make your top five that you are looking forward to next year? Um, because I'm a little, a little more mentions right now. Uh, Street Fighter Six could yep. be cool. It looks really fun. But it's uh, the betas have been really positively received so far. So that's exciting. Um. Uh, it's a new Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed Mirage is, looks like it's going back to the old school formula of the old game. That's not that's not the Assassin's Creed game you're looking forward to. No, no. You're Rabbit's Creed. Oh, that's the one that you're looking forward to. Of course, silly me. <laughs> so with Mirage, then uh, I've, I've, I have to be honest. I've not read an awful lot into it, but is that what they're doing? They're going back to basics with it. It seems that way. Yeah, I think it's less of a like a. It's not like the next big Assassin's Creed game. It's like a side side game, which so it looks like they've gone back to the old formula. Good, uh, which is cool because I like maybe I really like the old games, like Assassin's Creed Two and the old Etio trilogy. It's a big, big fan of. Yeah, I mean, you know, the last three Assassin's Creed games are all about fourteen thousand hours in length. <laughs> yeah, it's like a million collectibles, massive map you'll never explore. All it's up. like, hey, there's some new DLC coming out. It's like, what, what are you talking about? This game's been coming out. This big game's been out for like two and a, two and a half years now. <laughs> How is the new DLC for it? I oh, know, crazy. But you know, no one says a bad thing about them. I mean, I, I like Valhalla. I thought it was excellent. I really do think it's excellent. Uh, yeah, but it's, there's just too much of it. I, I, you know, there's there's too much of it. There's too much game. Too much yeah. there for for. A, a human person to consume. People <laughs> will disagree with that, and that's absolutely fine. But for me, I like... Give me Assassin's Creed Syndicate again. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Um, it wasn't when it came out, but it turned into a good one. Yeah, so let's have that again. Yeah, why not? No, wait. Syndicate? Is it Which one's Syndicate? Is that the British that's, people yeah. one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not thinking of that one. You think Immunity? That one. Yes, that one. French one. Let yes, that was awesome. I loved it. the The scenes with the Eiffel Tower, amazing. 
I need to get back and play that one. Yeah, do, yeah. I mean, don't say you're going to go back and play it because I know that you're not. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll put it on the list, which you know, it's never ending. So here we go. What uh, more chance of Rabbids Creed coming out fall 2023 than Finn playing Assassin's Creed Unity between now and then? Yeah, probably. That's true. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> uh, uh, the games got written down. Uh, Alan Wake 2. That could be good. Oh, is that 2023, is it? Yeah, Bamley. I don't think it's got a release date yet, but it's uh, it's been announced for this year or next year. Okay, cool. So that's cool. Really enjoyed the first one. And the yeah. control really good. So more of that would be good. Yeah, sequel's been a long time coming as well. Yeah, long, long time. Yeah. And then the other thing I've got written down is the uh, Persona 3 and 4 re-releases come in there, I think, next month. The yeah. January, around there. On everything, I think. Is that, is that right? Pretty much, yeah. PS4, Xbox, Switch, PC. Cool. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple of honourable mentions. Uh, Starfield. Oh, yeah, of course. Which is, uh, I'm curious about more than looking forward to. I'm, I just want to um, see what it's all about. It's an Xbox exclusive. There aren't many of them. So, uh, yeah. there's the one, right? With the, like, in space, Elder Scrolls space. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. So, it, I mean, on paper, it sounds great. And what they've shown so far, it looks great. Yeah. But, you know, let's just uh, keep our expectations in check a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, Xbox exclusives tend to not be <laughs> great third party ones anyway. I hate it yeah. really, really good, but third party ones. Yeah. Uh, but Bethesda uh, good stuff. It's yeah, Bethesda good. consistent. Yeah. I mean Fallout 76, maybe not. But hey, you, you say that, but it's apparently now. it's decent now. A lot, a lot of people play it still. Yeah. And again, yeah. it's one of them games where DLC is still coming out for it. Yeah, obviously people are playing it, people enjoy it, so yeah, fairly fix a lot of it, which is good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that you know they're talking about it in very high regard and hyping it up quite a lot. So, mm. but you know, at the same time, they did with Crackdown Three, and look at Crackdown Three. So, oh god, <laughs> not terrible, but not different either. Yeah, just the, best the same it. game. Yeah. <laughs> If this fucks up, they'll just probably just stick to bringing Gears of War and Halo and Forza out. <laughs> yeah, these are two exclusives. Take yeah. them all. Uh, I love my Xbox, but they've <laughs> their exclusives are well few and far between. Is probably the only way I could describe it. Non-existent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing my Xbox a lot at the minute, but again, it's yeah, basically. me, I am as well. Basically, Rocket League, which is on everything. So. <laughs> to be fair, it's it's the only one that has like a next or current gen version. Like Blazor only has the PS4 version. But it's oh really? Uh, next gen version, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought um the PlayStation version had upgraded to PS5. Yeah, not that I know. Unless they've got like a, a regular patch, but like a PS5 enhancement patch, but, but it doesn't have like a native PS5 version like the Xbox does. Oh, okay. That's yeah. why I'm going to download it on Xbox. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, and I've also got Suicide uh, Squad Kill the Justice League. Oh, yeah, that's really good. If it was single player, it'd be like on my list for sure. But the fact that it's like co the uh, with co op multiplayer, I'm like, okay, well, if that's still good, but I prefer to be single player. Yeah, same. I, I, I like playing. It's like Gotham Knights. Like, I like it. Yeah. And it, it, I like playing games on my own, but. You know, they've put a lot of sort of time into being able to play with other people online, and I don't really like people, so I don't want to play with random people online. And no one I know has Gotham Knights, so I'm just going to play it on my own. Yeah, it's like this, this style of game, it just feels more like a single player game. It just feels like the Arkham games, which are really good single player games. Like, yeah. I don't need two horned in co op. Yeah, if anything, you, you're taken away from what could be a very good single player experience. Yeah. By trying to shoehorn multiplayer in there, yeah. So yeah. you know, again, I'm looking at this one with a critical eye, Suicide Squad, because you know they're characters that I like. I'm, I've always been a DC fan, um, and I like the Suicide Squad and I like the Justice League. So I'll play it for sure, but I'll see how good it is first. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's yeah. 
but you know, Resident Evil's in my honorable mentions as well. But I, I'm I'm 100 going to play it. Nice. Yeah, and there's probably other stuff as well, but I just can't think of at the top of my head. Redfall is another one I'm curious of, which is another Bethesda game that's coming to Xbox. Oh yeah. So again, probably six out of ten or something. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be possible. <laughs> at least possible. Possible. Yeah. <laughs> possible. <laughs> oh man, you know. <laughs> For fuck's sake, they need to step it up big time because you can't just keep relying on the same few. I mean, I love Gears of War. I thought Gears of War Five was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, play through the whole thing. I loved it. Awesome. Um, I've not played all of Halo Infinite. Yeah, I started to play it and then my save that got corrupted. I thought, well, screw this then. I'll go back. Yeah. I'll, go, yeah. I'll go back. Fuck this. Let's watch this so. for a laugh. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and I love fours. The fours are rules. Yeah, well, it's great. But just, you know, get it right with the other stuff that you want to do. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, obviously, you know, the acquisition of Bethesda helps because that, that's going to pump out some, you would imagine, good exclusives. Yeah. If they could pump out games, the quality of Deathloop, exclusive for Xbox, then, you know, you're on to a winner. Because Deathloop is awesome. Yeah. But yeah, needs to figure it out because 360 would have loads of stuff, but not it, which is just like excellent. I made with my console of choice back then. Yeah, it had so many unique games and stuff on it. Yeah, I love but, the 360. Yeah, but now it's gone completely dead away, and Sony's it's got all the exclusives, and <laughs> Xbox has very little. Yeah, I'd like to see a little bit of something different from Sony in terms of exclusives because let's yeah. be fair here, and this. You know, I play it on both, so I'm not biased towards one or the other. <laughs> the over-the-shoulder, third-person, you know, story games. You know, you've yeah, I know what you mean. I you think know, that's, you're doing it to death a little bit. I think that's one of the uh, problems I have with God of War. I'm not to keep piling them on, but it's just, it's just, I played so many third-person, over-the-shoulder, story-driven action games recently. It's like, yeah, cool, another one, <laughs> fun. Which is, and yeah, again, there's nothing wrong with those games at all. It's just there's so many. And the, the the thing is with them, a lot. Obviously, they're they're all their own game, and you can tell them apart. But that and that's not really where I was going with that. But that they're, they're difficult to sort of differentiate. In terms of, I mean, they all look great. They all play great. But as soon as you start moving with the character, you're like, yeah, this is a PlayStation exclusive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've seen similar complaints online as well, um, saying how they're all similar. And uh, like Days Gone, loved I loved Days Gone. It was too long, but you know, <laughs> many days were indeed gone. But um, you know, as soon as I started moving with the main character, I was like, "Yeah, this is a PlayStation exclusive." <laughs> yeah, and I think that's perhaps why you know, uh, although I, I enjoyed Horizon and I'm enjoying God of War, I've not been. Um, breaking my neck to sort of go back and play them. I will go through God of War, but I've just there's other stuff that I'd rather play at the minute. I just don't feel in the mood for it. Yeah, same. Do you know what I mean by that? Like I, again, like you, I feel like I've played so many games of a similar type that are third person story driven games. I just want something else at the minute. Yeah, same. I'm just like. Yeah, I'm gonna play Witcher Three again. Because, but it's like oh, again, a third-person story-driven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is a good point. Actually. It's, but it's, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm stuck. Like, I want to finish God of War, obviously, but I'm, I don't know where to go from there. Yeah, is it Rocket League, which is <laughs> my, my addiction. So old now as well. Yeah, and they're still going. It's still good. They keep adding stuff to it. There's so many game modes now. Player base is massive, and it's free. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, but I would I would like to see Sony do something a little bit different with their exclusives. Me too. And I'm not, you know, you you just you cannot absolutely you cannot knock the quality of the PlayStation exclusives that come out. The storytelling is brilliant, the acting is always superb, the graphics, the gameplay always all great, but they're all the same sort of thing. Yeah. Like even Ratchet and Clank is the same thing. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah. you have all these different characters 
and they're all in very similar types of games. Yeah, I think I think Rats and Legs probably the most unique out of them, but it is still a third person action game <laughs> at the end of the day. It is, yeah. And as beautiful as they are, and as as well as they do play, you, you get a bit of burnout on them. Hmm. So yeah. I played through the the la- I've played through the Last of Us and Horizon this year, and the Horizon's not a short game. The Last of Us is pretty long. Yeah. And then you know you do want to divert your attention to other things because of that. Because if you just sat there and played fucking third person story driven games all year, you you know what I mean? It, yeah. The burnout. The burnout. Yeah. Burnout is real. The burnout is absolutely real. Yeah. But yeah. So kudos to Xbox for trying something different, but just do it better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, do it better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> any any of the gaming snippets that you uh wanted to mention or talk about? Um, I think that's about it, really. Oh, they've been, they've finally announced that the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters are coming to uh console. Final Fantasy basically... what, sorry? So, so they've, they've, they've remastered Final Fantasy 1 to 6. Oh, put them, okay. Put them on PC and mobile, and that was it for like a year and a half. Oh, yeah, of course, I remember. And now they finally announced that it's coming to console. Um, and they made a physical version, um, and they put on their website, which I managed to get them pre ordered just in time because they made like nice. 10 copies because they sold out pretty much instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Even just a regular physical version that isn't collected edition sold out immediately. And um, which console did you go for? Uh, PS4. Okay. It's, I think it's only PS4 and Switch. I don't think it's on Xbox. It's weird. Mm, it's, okay. Uh, yeah. It's weird because the re- most recent Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII, um, spin off, prequel, remake. Uh, it's on <laughs> Xbox, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Xbox, yeah. So I'm not sure why, uh, why they pick and choose certain games on Xbox and some not. Very yeah, it'd be good on Switch, actually, the uh, Final Fantasy 1 to 6 collection. Oh, yeah. They're perfect little handy old games for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that perfect for Switch thing again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that yeah, was... yeah, perfect for Switch. <laughs> uh, right, let's talk wrestling. Yes. Uh, although, you know, not a great deal going on this week, to be fair. Yeah, a bit of a slow week again. Um, on board, we had uh, the return of Bonson Reed, which is very cool. Yeah, yeah, really cool. I know that was rumored for a while. Mm. This uh, the of uh, the Miz came back as a heel. Uh, helping him in this ladder match against Dexter Loomis. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's cool. I, I like, I, to be honest, I saw, I remember seeing it rumored and then I forgot all about it. And then I saw that he came back on Raw and I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that this was going to happen, but he was undecided between uh, New Japan and WWE. I'm assuming WWE obviously offered him a better deal. And um, yeah, now he's back on, on Raw, which is great. It's good seeing these. Guys, back that Triple H obviously had a lot of stock in back in you know NXT. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I they obviously had an accident on the NXT. I always l- liked to want to read all the, one of the highlights on NXT at the time. Cool so, Godzilla inspired entrance too. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, <laughs> well, I do yeah. miss. I'm going to miss um, hearing Wade Barrett say tsunami. It's a shame we didn't say uh, Dippy on SmackDown. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you never know. You could get drafted eventually. Yeah. Yeah. But no, very cool. Very, uh, very cool. Oh, yes. Manny Rose got released. No. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Let's talk about that. So, yeah, we've seen the reason why she was released. Yes. We say with big smiles on our faces. <laughs> <laughs> Making naughty pictures online. But... I I mean, there's a lot of people on, on Twitter, as there always is, that uh, have an opinion on this and be like, oh, fuck WWE and you know, double standards and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay. And they always like, they throw other people in there. It's like, oh, but so-and-so did this and so-and-so did that. It's like, yeah, but so-and-so wasn't making money uh, from from doing that. They, they weren't selling that. You know what I mean? I mean, th- essentially selling softcore pornography. <laughs> Basically, yeah. People compare it to like the like actual era and like Ruthless Aggression era when they had like some of them proposed Playboy, that was a different time, a very different time. Um, compared to now, yeah, you can't, you can't have them, you know, it's about you know, at the end of the day, it's about the sponsors, you know, the sponsors don't want to be sponsoring 
um, you know, they need to go up and do porn. <laughs> and I mean, time. It's, it's like because you know, people will kids will Google Mandy Rose, yeah, and what will come up will be that, yes. It's and... a change. Apparently, she was told, like, that you know, you need to tone it down a little bit, which she didn't do, which is a shame. Um, but she obviously makes a lot of money doing that, so you know, it's her choice at the end of the day, isn't it? And it, yeah, it, I mean, yeah, it, at the end of the day, it's her choice, and it unfortunately has cost her a job. But you know, there's, there's one thing playing video games on Twitch and you know, making money from that kind of thing. And it's another thing selling pictures of your lower region on on the internet to to perverts. Yeah, pretty much. Two very very different things. Um, yeah, just a bit. So she basically, you know, took WWE were like, "Yep, yeah, okay, you can go and do other stuff, and you can make money from it, and that's fine." But she took advantage of it. She, yeah. She, she yeah. Give him an to, inch, took a mile. Yeah, she had to have known that they was, this will get her in trouble eventually. It was just yeah, because mouth. it's the internet. You know, things yeah. things leak off, off the internet. Yeah. As soon as Sean Michaels found out, it's like, oh, nope. <laughs> Bunny, Bunny said it was uh, way over the line of what they uh, would allow, unsurprisingly. Yeah, so. and, and, and I agree with WWE on this. And, and I can see it from that that sort of perspective. I can understand why... WWE would be mad at the fact that she's doing it and yeah. would not want her to do it. Hey, look, I'm sure if it was just sort of bikini pics and that sort of thing, lingerie or whatever, then I'm sure they probably wouldn't have had an issue with it. Yeah. But the fact that you've got Tino Sabatelli also naked and behind Mandy Rose in the shower, you know... It's not the best look at it. It's not a great look. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks because Manny, Manny Bro is doing such a good job in NXT. Oh, Com- yeah. So far compared to how she was on the main roster. And now she's just kind of, just feel like she's stuck all the way to the sake of, uh, I don't know, making a lot more money, <laughs> I suppose, on, by doing that. But the thing is, though, is she making more money? Yeah, I don't know. You can make a lot of money off her, but. <laughs> well yeah okay I, I, yeah you're right you are right sex sells doesn't it i mean that's the that's the that's always been the big thing yeah but sex sells hopefully she i don't know changes their mind down the line somewhere and she's able to come back i, I do I, think she'll i do think they'll we'll see her back eventually yeah and i did read somewhere that the doors are open to her if she decides she wants to stop doing that stuff and come back to wrestling so, like Mandy, cl- close your legs and the doors will be open again. <laughs> Pretty much. As you say, there are, there are you know, other female superstars who do like, uh, less hardcore stuff. Like I know Selena Baker has a OnlyFans, but I think that's mostly for like your cosplay and outfits and things. Yeah, yeah. Still for perverts, but <laughs> she's doing it in a, a little bit of a more decent way, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So they've got Alistair Black's, uh, sorry, Malachi Black. Standing behind her in a shower. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to be fair, she's so tiny, Malachi Black could rest his dick on her forehead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's pretty, she's pretty small. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I can see why WWE would release Mandy <laughs> for, for doing that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But it is a shame because she was doing so well in NXT. She was Discord great. Um, she was doing so great in NXT and she was the champion for so long and she'd come on leaps and bounds in terms of being an actual wrestler and she obviously introduced uh, Toxic Attraction and her being part of that sort of elevated that them as well. And now they've got to go it alone. So it, just, it fucks a lot of stuff up and it's, it's just a real shame. But hopefully... Yeah. She can, you know, wear a few more clothes and then come back and uh, do stuff again. Yeah. I do think Toxic Attraction will stay together. I hope. Oh, yeah, uh, I hope so. Separately, they'd be hopeless, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's been such a good tag team. A lot of fun to watch on the uh, every week. 
Definitely, yeah. And also, you know, if they're taking the women's tag team titles on the main roster a bit more serious, then, you know, there's no reason to break tag teams up. Yeah, exactly. Um, those rumours of Vince coming back died down pretty quick, didn't they? Thank God. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. I've just saw everywhere. It's like everyone, nobody in WWE wants him back. And it would be a terrible image for him to come back, especially now with even more allegations coming towards him. Yeah. No, it's definitely not going to happen. But uh, that was the big rumour that this time last week before we recorded. Yeah. And then nothing since, to the surprise of uh, nobody. We did say it wouldn't happen. People on the internet were like, oh, he's going to come back while brushing their neck beard. And then, (laughs) um, yeah, to the surprise of nobody at all, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Good. Stay away, Vince. Yeah. Yeah, Vince. God damn it, I want to come back. <laughs> it's my WWE, damn it. Who the these... fuck is Bronson Reed? Yeah. Who are these new people? I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Why are people got two names? I just <laughs> want one name. The one that makes the least sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Theory. <Just> yeah. <laughs> Theory. <laughs> That's the worst one. Like, yeah. you know, I can deal with riddle to a degree you know but yeah. theory just sounds so shit <laughs> like it's not a name it's a th- no it's it's <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing this is <laughs> like just in coming down to the ring like one name unless it's a a cool name like it even sounds shit when a ring announcer's doing it yeah the united states champion theory Theory. So is the United States States champion in theory? Where is he? Na- is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's the United States champion in. Th- he was Mister Money in the Bank in theory. Yeah, yeah. Which you know, in the end, that may as well have been the case. But pretty much. What do you think to WWE venturing into um, into gender wrestling this week? I like it. <laughs> it was very good. It was, it was very uh, entertaining. Um, it's a tough thing to do though because you can't have men. Punching women in the face, for example, on TV. <laughs> I don't think the sponsor would like that very much. Uh, but I think there are ways around it to make it work. I thought they did a really good job on uh, this week. Yeah, I like Akira Tozawa a lot, and it's been good to see him doing stuff and not wearing a fucking karate costume. That's a, just the most Vince thing. Oh, it's Japanese. Put him in a karate outfit. Have him be a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I just saw the Discord notification that says podcast pop. These fuckers uh, know. I didn't, I didn't even put anything on the internet to say that we're recording now. They must have just guessed. Yeah, they guess it's this time of day. Huh? In, this name, in the evening. Oh, damn you guys. We're getting bitches. Time. Where's uh, that son of a bitch? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think there's a way to do... I think there's a, there's a, there's a place for intergender wrestling, I think. Yeah, me too. At the end of the day, it's pro wrestling. Yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not cage fighting. If it was men versus women in cage fighting, like, you know, mixed martial arts, a little bit different. Yeah. I mean, maybe Ripley's the perfect person to start it. She's a beast. She can, snap. <laughs> she can, she can beat up most men in, on the roster in real life, probably. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this was like a test in the waters type thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, like... I've got no issue with it. I really, I really haven't got any issue with it. But it, it depends. The fine line that you need to uh, you need to tread is how far you take it. Because obviously, you've got a women's division, mm. and you know this was the same with China back in the day. Obviously, China had been the intercontinental champion by beating Jeff Jarrett, but then further down the line she was the women's champion and she was wrestling people like ivory who of course were way way smaller than her and because she'd already beaten jeff jarrett you know what does it look like when you eventually sort of step back into that women's division yeah i I kind of actually going to be something we see a whole lot of um i don't even see like i don't know actually i don't think we see like rear wrestling for the like United States Championship or something like that. But then again, there would be, you know, something new. There'd be a spectacle to see, like, I think Ripley versus Austin Theory or something. And, you know, having the, uh, Ripley walking around as the US champ would be pretty cool. 
But as you say, agreed. You... But then, do you abolish the women's championships and everyone just goes for everyone, everything? Exactly. Yeah. Unless you keep, unless you keep with like mid card titles, because obviously they're doing the mid card women's title. At least not yet. Maybe one day. But. Mm. Uh, yeah, Isn't it you? I mean, you're right. I don't. I don't think it's something that they do every single week. I don't think they have. You know, oh, is there anyone in the back that's going to come out and chat? It's and also in 2022, I don't think you can do that. Yeah, it does. You can't have you can't have men beating a woman on TV. Well, I don't, I don't think it'd be a good look for WWE for like Rhea standing in the ring going, "Are there any other men backstage that want to come in that I can beat up?" <laughs> it, it's just not a good look, is it? I think you know the fact that she challenged uh, Tazawa just out of the blue and then it you know it happened that way i think it works yeah that's a way to do but it. i don't think you could sort of go advertising next week on raw it's rhea ripley versus bobby lashley or something <laughs> like that you know what i mean yeah yeah i know what you mean yeah it's a weird yeah. one but I, I i'm not against it but i think you have to be careful with the way that you do it yeah agreed but hey look rhea ripley fucking rules man she's having a hell of a year yeah, it's awesome. And they've turned this whole Judgment Day thing right round. When Vince was in charge, it was absolutely appalling. Yeah. Well, but, like, uh, I, I really like it now. Now what? But yeah, no, me too. I like Dominic as well, being like the cowardly heel, hides behind his teammates. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, I think this is the better way for him as well. Instead of yeah. him trying to um, prove himself as a, a good wrestler week in, week out, I think this is the better way for it, for them to do it. For him, because let's be fair here, Dominic skipped NXT, whereas he probably shouldn't have, and only did because of who his dad is. And you know, he was thrust into the limelight very quickly. His yeah. dad being Eddie Guerrero, of course, not Rey Mysterio. We established oh, yeah. this, for... yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, personality wise, he needed something to give him that edge because yeah. very... when, when, when he was with Ray, he was very bland, he was just kind of his gimmick was he's Rey Mysterio's son. And that's it. That yeah, uh, literally that that was his that was his whole shtick, wasn't it? He comes yeah. out with similar music. Um, you know, he comes out dressed in the bright colours and all that sort of stuff, and it was doing nothing for anybody really. Yeah, nobody cared. But now he's in Judgment Day, and he's got this whole thing going on. With him and Rhea Ripley have got a really good like back and forth going on, and yeah, I really like the Judgment Day. I think I think it it just works. Yeah, agreed. It's very, very uh, entertaining. I like it a lot. Yeah, definitely. But there's a, a lot of good stuff going on in WWE at the minute. Yeah, there is. Uh, yeah, I haven't finished watching more yet, but you know, I've been, I know what's happened. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been watching it every week. Like before, I'd watch like I'd skip through it. Maybe it'll take like half an hour to get through a three-hour show. Same, yeah. <laughs> but now it's like I watch pretty much everything. It's, yeah, uh, me too. Yeah. Um, I I watched um, Dynamite last week in full properly for the first time in a while, nice. and I thought it was very, very good. Yeah, that, that, was it that winter's coming? Uh, yeah, that's it, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I need to go back and watch that. I keep, for some reason, AEW, I, I just, I don't know. I, I know what you mean. Or just not in the mood for it at the time. I think it's yeah. too much. But, yeah, but this, this week it felt like a, a really good show, like from, from top to bottom as well, like, well, from bottom to top, however you want to say it. But um, I watched it and I, I really, I sat there and I was like, you know what, this is actually really good. If it, if it could be this consistently good every week, um, you know, they really are onto a real winner. But it isn't consistent every week. But mm. it's getting there. It's definitely getting better. Um, yeah. I think they're doing a good job. And I was very critical of it. They have obviously got the best of seven series with uh, the Death Triangle and uh, the Elite going th th for the trios titles and in a best of seven series and they're doing it really well that's good um that was all, you know, like a lot of matches like better seven seemed like a lot and there's definitely a way you know it definitely felt like overkill when it was first announced they're like oh yeah it's going to be a best of seven series and you're like oh why <laughs> yeah but um they're doing it they're, they're booking it really well that's good um oh I read, I read something quite interesting today actually um, I read that Kenny Omega's contract is up at the end of January next year. Oh, yeah. Which actually is very soon. But he might have a few months tacked on because he was injured for a bit. Um, but he's yet to renew. And the same goes for the Young Bucks. Now, they they signed an extension, and I think they run up until 2024. 
Oh, wow, okay. And it, it looks like, I mean, it certainly reads like they could weigh up their options when their deals are up. Yeah, I mean, never say never, right? Who thought Cody Rhodes was going to come back to WWE? Well, yeah. Yeah, ne- literally never. Yeah. Like imagine- I thought that I thought that was the one case of never say never where you could say it and it was fine. <laughs> yeah. But then it bloody happened. Like CM Punk returning and then unreturning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd love to see Omega in WWE. That'd be awesome. Put him in yeah. Again, you know, anyone. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, reports would seem to suggest that Omega and the books would come as a package deal. Yeah, Much I mean, like, you know, remember when um, AJ and the Good Brothers and uh, Nakamura, they all came pretty much all at once. Yeah. But it was like AJ and the Good Brothers, um, they came almost like a package deal at the beginning. Yeah. So it would it, it'd be very interesting. And yeah, I'd like to see uh, Omega and the Bucks in WWE as well. Why not? Yeah. Do the, the Bucks versus Usos or the New oh. Day. Yeah, I mean, Usos versus the Bucks would be that's dream match stuff at this point, right? Oh yeah, big time. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's fair to say that's dream match stuff. Big time. Yeah, for sure. Um, but you know, Kenny versus Reigns, any you know anything like that? Yeah, that that'd be so awesome. Yeah, Kenny versus AJ. Kenny versus. I don't know. Yeah, say anyone. Seth Rollins. Yeah, Seth. Yeah. Kevin Owens. Fucking hell. I mean, the the, op- the options really are like there, and yeah. I think now that the old man's not there anymore, the old <laughs> sex pest, old Vince. <laughs> now that he ain't there no more, I think there's a very real possibility of people like Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks signing with WWE because you know they. I think would they probably appreciate that. Triple H is a wrestling guy. Yeah. Whereas Vince was a businessman. Vince obviously sold the earth to Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes went back. It was, you know, and he will still get like the, the mega treatment when he, when he returns from injury, uh, I think he'll win the Royal Rumble and I think he'll wrestle Roman Reigns on one of the nights of WrestleMania. That makes sense. Take one of the belts off him and yeah. then like, and take one back to raw basically. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I think there was talk. I can't remember if we talked about it last week or not, but there was talk of like The Rock. Well, like, Reigns basically wrestling on both nights of WrestleMania, one against The Rock, the other potentially against Cody Rhodes. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah. That, Have him lose one to Cody and maybe win against The Rock or something. Yeah, definitely that. I think beat The Rock, lose to Cody. Yeah, makes sense. And so somebody tweeted me, re- right, replied uh, and said, oh, you can't have him... You can't have Reigns, who's beating the likes of Goldberg and Brock, you know, lose to somebody like Cody. And I, I totally disagree with that because, you know, you you you've got to beef these people up because otherwise, you know, you're going to have that rotation of Goldberg and Brock and Reigns and The Rock and Cena and people like that forever, and you just can't. Yeah, exactly. Like. With the right booking, you can have anyone book, beat anyone. Yeah, you know? it's yeah, it's pro wrestling. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, you know, which is otherwise, you know, you say, oh, you can't have Cody Rhodes beat Roman Reigns, but that means by that logic, you have to have somebody like Braun Strowman beat him. Mm. <laughs> but <laughs> exactly, yeah. That, I mean, your face says it all. I yeah. mean, I don't, I don't dislike Braun by any stretch, but I would like to see. I know, firstly, I need to have the belt separated again because Raw is relying so heavily on the United States Championship at the minute. And I, I'm not against it, but SmackDown's doing such a great job of having a world heavyweight champion and a really strong mid-card. Yeah. And Raw needs that as well. Raw's the longest show as well. So Raw really needs that. Yeah. Big time. So, um, yeah, I, I imagine that Reigns will lose one night and win the other. I think you, yeah, you have him beat The Rock on night one, have him lose to Cody on night two. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Yeah, that that for me is the right booking. You put Cody's like, I don't, you know, I just want to win the WWE Championship. 
I want to become the WWE champion. I don't want to become the Universal Undisputed Champion or whatever the fuck. I want to be the WWE champion. So, uh, you know, he defends one belt one night, defends the other belt the other night, and then that's how they separate the belts. Because I know that tri- that's how Triple H, he wants to separate the belts, but it's finding the right way to do it. And I think, I think personally, that's the right way to do it. Yeah, I agree. That'd be the perfect way to do it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, cool. The trend sevens in AEW now. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. To see him pop up, pop up on there. Happy for him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he had a match again on Rampage this week. Teamed up with uh, uh, the heels to fight the faces. Nice. Which, uh, which I, th- I thought it was cool. It's cool to see him doing something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was sort of hoping selfishly I'd get to work with him on the indies uh, over the next few months, but I'm not sure how likely that is at the minute. Yeah, well, maybe when they call you up to AEW, he'll. Uh be there with the Taz and the Excalibur. <laughs> oh, you think I'll be able to go there after the uh, amount of slagging it off I've done on here? <laughs> oh, good point, yeah. <laughs> same, same goes for WWE, to be fair. I'd literally have to create my own wrestling, like, I'd have to become a billionaire and create my own giant wrestling company to com- to actually get on commentary on a major company. <laughs> it could happen. Yeah, it could do. To be fair, if Mandy can sell pictures of her flaps and the doors still be open, then I think I'm probably okay. Yeah, I think you're okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I'm okay. <laughs> On that note, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about today? Um, that's about it. I need to think of anything else that happened wrestling wise, but I think that's probably it. Nothing major happening this week other than the Mandy Rose thing. Oh, yeah, cool. other than the Mandy Rose thing. Oh, um, this isn't major at all, but Axiom and. Um, Chase from Chase U uh, were on main event, apparently. Oh, cool. So they might be due call-ups soon, which I'm all about. And also, Kylie Ray was on main event last week. Oh, yeah. That's cool. It's just been so popping. Cool. Yeah. Definitely. So it's we been... should see if they sign her. I know she's had problems in other companies that she's been in. Um, but she looked, she didn't look out of place in WWE, I didn't think, when I saw uh, when I saw the main event clips and stuff. So I think it'd be cool to see her sign full time, maybe do a stint in NXT first, perhaps, and then um, maybe come up to the main roster. She's certainly capable. It's just sort of whether she um, is mentally there with it, if you know what I mean. I don't mean that in a negative way. I I mean it in a can she handle that kind of schedule type thing. Yeah, hopefully. The more, you know, women's roster, more the more women, more talented women like women's roster, the better. Absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, all good. Especially during Rhea Ripley's transformation into a man to move on to uh, the mid card tiles. So yeah, <laughs> we need someone to fill the void. I'm joking, of course. Please don't cancel us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's cool. All good, all good. Right. In that case, this has been episode 164 of the Games and Grabs podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts across podcast services. Everywhere. Everywhere. And youtube.com forward slash games graps. From myself and Finn, we wish you a very happy Christmas. Yes. We will be back before the new year, so uh, we're not going to wish you a happy new year until next week. Yeah. Um, But we we hope you have the, the, the best Christmas possible. And the greatest gift that you could possibly have is the Games and Graps podcast being back weekly. Yeah, absolutely. You're welcome. You are welcome. We've been in Santa's sack for long enough. It's time for us to come out of it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My name's Sonny G and I've been with Finsteel. Yes. And uh, we will see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Merry Christmas. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) Ho, 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 ho.